<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Casual Podcast. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Rob. And guys, we have a very special guest today. Guys, I want to welcome Marvin Vittori. Let's get him in. There he is. Yes, the man. What's up? <laughs> Here I am. Hell yeah. Marvin, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, man. We are uh, we are huge fans of yours, and uh, we we are we are thrilled that you're here with us. Awesome. Um, awesome. So, yeah. uh, like we said already, man, welcome to the United States. Uh, I yeah. hope your your travel wasn't too bad. I hope the jet lag's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, like like uh, there's a moment where I'm super tired, but it's fine. Like I got a few nights of good sleep, so it's good. Good. And the, yeah. and the flight, man, like. They sent me back because I had like a rapid test. Now to fly in some places in Europe, you have to be, you need a, a negative COVID test. And I had a rapid test and they sent me back. I had to do a PCR test and then finally. Yeah, oh, finally yeah. I, I, yeah. Finally. Made well, it. we're Dude. glad you're here. We're glad you're on the show. Let's jump Absolutely. right in. All right. So, you know, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of MMA fighters uh, who are from Italy. Uh, and I hear when you had first started out, you had to go to like six different gyms uh, to learn all the different skills because MMA was was still fairly new uh, as you were growing up. So I was just curious, uh, what actually inspired you to um, start training mixed martial arts? And uh, when did you know that you were going to fight professionally? Well, so, you know, I come from a small village up north. So, you know, there, there might have been a little better situation, maybe down in Milan and or down in Rome, you know, big cities like that. But since I was up there, obviously it was me. I, I didn't have like MMA was basically new, so I just had right. to drive around like that. And then uh, one of the reasons why I went to London instead of going uh, down to these other cities, I was like, well, it's, since I have to move, you know, like finding finding. Also, I had to find a job to 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 support myself. I know, like going going in, like if I had to go like some 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 cities like Milan or Rome, it's never it's super hard to find a job like part time job, and you know it's hard. So I felt like in, in in London I had a better chance to find a job like that. So, but yeah, so basically I had to drive around all, all over the places at first, and then I eventually moved to London. So, uh, was there anything that actually like? motivated you or made you want to start uh fighting professionally yeah i mean i i, I grew up doing doing like uh playing around martial arts with my with my dad all the time and like and um i always loved contact sports too and uh, mm -hmm. i was always super competitive and then um uh, I was, I wouldn't say I was a troublemaker but a little bit you know like, I was always, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was never backing down from 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 fights or something like that. Right. And, and, and then uh, and then um, and then I started out like uh, watching videos and stuff of 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 the pride back then and like uh, even even I I started out the first time it popped up was was Fader and I remained shocked by him for for forever even even yeah. now. <laughs> and then I got into it more and more and I saw like Roy well, Gracie. And, the old fights and then uh, and then all, all the pride legends that were in there and then um, and that's why I, I kept going and I loved it and I, I really got like it was fascinating I, I remember being so surprised by how much uh, damage they could take and then now here I am and I all right, so to piggyback on what Rob was just saying, what's it like to be fighting for an entire country? You know, McGregor fights for Ireland. You got Aldo fighting for Brazil. Naganu and Izzy, they fight for Nigeria. Jan fights for Poland. And now Marvin Vittori is fighting for Italy. Uh, I mean, does that, does that add more pressure to you, or does that give you more confidence knowing that there's a whole country behind you? No, it's, it's, it's awesome. I feel like I learned through the, through the years to how to channel this energy and, and, and to give me strength, you know, and, and confidence and all that. And I feel like in Italy for years, this, like this fighting, uh, um, this fighting sports hasn't, haven't been like 
followed enough and haven't had the support that they, they, they deserve. So I feel like I need to be the one that brings back the, this this support to, to these fighting sports because I believe they're the best in the world to watch and, and, and to do and all that. But, like, you know, like, so, like, uh, in Italy now is 99% about soccer and I, and I feel like, yeah, okay, soccer is, is, is a nice sport, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're in there trying to take each other out and, and, and it's a whole different level of, 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 of competitiveness and, and, and intensity and, and, and everything else. So, no, man, it, 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 it's nice. It's, it's beautiful. I, it, it's awesome to, to represent the, the, this, my country and also, like, to give people strength, you know, because at the end of the day, I feel like it, it really inspires people, you know. There, there, there are no such sports like, like MMA where you're really fighting against an opponent, but you're really fighting against anything. Like, you, you're not just your opponent. Like, you're fighting against anything. Yeah, regard, yeah. regarding yourself right. or regarding life, it's, it's, so I feel like it's it's a good message no matter what. That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, that's so awesome. Do you, do you now that you're older, um, compared to when you were younger, um, are there a lot more MMA gyms popping up, like besides like the big cities like Rome and stuff, or is it still fairly uh, new and, and still aimed more towards soccer? <laughs> Uh, it's, it, there, there definitely, there's definitely more, um, but it's still kind of fairly new, but, but it's getting, it's getting more recognition for sure. Oh, that's great. Um, so to, to bring it back to 2008, uh, you were actually sidelined by USADA. 2018. Or, more, or I'm, excuse me. <laughs> 2018. Uh, you were sidelined by USADA for more than a year due to a false positive test. Um, eventually, USADA found no evidence of intentional use, which is consistent with several other uh, supplement contamination cases. So, can you explain what was going through your mind uh, when you were first notified of that, and uh, what did you do to cope with the stress while you were waiting for the final results? Yeah, it was some. It was probably one of the hardest times of my life, to be honest. I thought for like, I thought for like, for a week, I thought like somebody was popping out of some door telling me that it was a joke. But, right. Uh, there was nobody that ever, you know, mm-hmm. nobody ever came out of that door. But um, yeah, man, I, it was just I just fell from the sky, and it, I, I remember I had like it wasn't that close, but I still had a fight coming up, and uh, and all of a sudden everything falls up, everything falls down on you, and um, it's hard because you know first of all, you know you, you, you're. You know, you got to keep going because at the end of the day, I kept telling myself, yeah, well, you know, I, I luckily I had a little bit of money saved and I was like, right. you know, what do, what do you want to do with your life? And obviously the answer was like fighting. I want to be the best in the world of what I do. And so I was like, well, then we have to find, like, I was talking to myself in the sense. I was like, right. I was like, well, then we have to find, like, but then I have to find a way to keep doing that and, and make sure that I, I'm ready for, for when the time comes for me to be back and it was always like kind of hard because like it was never anything sure they were they never told me like oh you're going to be out for this time it was always like oh in a month you will we will see what's going to happen after or in a month or not like you know there was there were different moments throughout that year but there was always something coming up and i was like okay then on my head and maybe i was kind of like convincing myself but i was always oh but what if then like obviously the moment i was cleared i was always like like since i could be, could have been cleared any time i was like oh well yeah. then since i don't want to waste no time the moment i'm cleared i want to have a fight so I was, I was always like well i need to be ready because if, if i get cleared in next month then i i want to get a fight as soon as possible so i yeah. was always like oh like even though and and i knew in a sense that it wasn't as it, it wasn't something that would, would have gone as like that wouldn't have played out in, in a very short time, but you know, I found ways, and I and I kept telling myself that I had to be ready, and I had to be ready for, for when the moment was arriving again. And, yeah, and, and it's uh, it's and such so, bu- it's such bullshit too, because it's like you know these false positive tests come up. The the fighter gets a bad name, he's not allowed to fight, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we made a mistake, and it's like there's no repercussions for them, but the fighter takes you know they take. Yeah. 
it's just it's such a it's it, I, I I don't like it. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, and it, it happens well, a lot. And, and man, like you see me now, I, I really have like in a sense PTSD. It's like like it's like the the, the tests are so sensitive. Like, listen, I'm all about Uzada taking out the guys that are, that are doing, like, uh, PED. But mm-hmm. uh, um, at the same time, these tests are so sensitive that anything, man, like, anything could, could, could result into a positive test in a sense. Now, if I open a bottle of water and I lose sights of it, I even though it's, if, if have, it's half... Uh, um, Throw it away. <laughs> old, I, I'm like, and I feel, I feel bad because I'm like, fuck, that's good water, but I'm like... <laughs> Nah, man, I'm just can't risk away. it. And it, even on cream, sometimes people like just massage. They do like massages and they use cream. And every time I'm there, like, uh, like, can I see the cream you're using? And I'm like, and, and right. you guys look at me like, what the fuck? What about this? <laughs> but then, but then, my, then, and then I explain them, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. But it, it seems crazy to them. But it, it, that's the life of look. Like, you know, like I, I don't eat no protein bars. Not, 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 nothing that has like any kind of like supplement. Almost even like, uh, whenever they tell me like, "Oh no, this thing is all natural," that freaks me out even more because I'm like, <laughs> "How are you getting like, all this in there?" <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, like all, all I'm looking for is like either third-party testers or like, like in Italy, like pharmacies are kind of different. Like pharmacies in Italy, like whatever they sell, they have to go through such, I guess, like big like um, uh, regulation. So yeah. like. Pharmacies in Italy, it's not like here. It's like, uh, so whatever, like, I get, like, from big, big uh, um, uh, companies that, that serve pharmacies in Italy, I I, 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 I trust. and But that's the only thing. Either third-party testers or eventually, like, things like that. And sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to trip out on food because otherwise then, I, then, then it's a rabbit hole and you just get crazy. Because, yeah. But... But yeah, man, it's it's kind of crazy. It's got to be a lot of stress. Um, all right, I want to talk to you real quick. When you were going to fight Roberson, um, he missed weight not once; he missed weight twice. And then when the fight finally happened, you tapped him in the first round, <laughs> which yeah. was awesome. So, yeah. I mean, to me, when a fighter misses weight, it's it seems unprofessional. It seems disrespectful to the other fighter yeah. to come in overweight. So, when a fighter does miss weight, um, what? How does that make you feel? Uh, when it, when he's your opponent, especially knowing that you busted your ass all camp to come in and actually mate weight. I mean, yeah. do you think do you think that giving them a fine is is a big enough punishment? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it all depends. Like, I don't know because it it, it goes case by case. Like, it ha- like it can't happen. Like, I know it's wrong, and and I probably give would give more fine, but. It can't happen. It just that time with Robertson, I was pissed because he was the first there to make weight, and I'm like, when I walked in, he was there before me, and I'm like, oh well, then he must be on weight. He's there. Right. He's the first one there, and then comes out. Is, is, is he, he, he was missing weight, and that's when you know that he's broken. Like he's like he didn't even use the time. That means you just tell yourself it's over. Right. And. Um, and then, um, I mean, it also shows that you, you're 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 not like elite because elite just show up and whatever the rules are, they they stay in those rules. So um, it shows a bunch of things, but it goes case by case, you know. Like at the end of the day, you cannot. I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't know what would be the what would be the the right fine, but. Yeah, even more probably, even more because of course, like whoever makes weight, it's busting his ass off and yeah. he's making everything to do. Or they make a they, you, you make you make a choice. You, you you just cut less or you go up on weight. Right. But yeah. you know, the, and and you we we can debate on it's right or wrong as much as we want. But the thing is, like, those are the rules. You gotta follow, follow the rules. rules. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like, dude, you guys are professional athletes. It's like. This is your job, yeah. you know, your job. You, you, if you're going to fight at 185, you come in at 185. Like, especially yeah. if you come in like four pounds overweight, it's like, come on, man. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's almost like that. <laughs> it was funny because I knew, I knew, because I knew like I, I was seeing sometimes what he was posting and what he was saying. And uh, I saw that 
he was talking about him getting a new nutritionist and this nutritionist giving him a lot of carbs, which is right, but you have to come from like a, you need to know yourself in a sense and have a history of you using carbs. If you're used to a no, no carb diet and then all of a sudden you try to make a cut that you're not even, not even able to do without carbs, using carbs, yeah. I knew he was coming in overweight. And then they told me, oh, you want him to come more and maybe risk that he's not going to fight again? I'm like, fuck no. Like, That's awesome. Uh, all right. So uh, you are the only man to win on a judge's scorecard uh, against the current UFC middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya. Um, you are now the number five ranked middleweight in the UFC. And it is inevitable that you guys will fight again. So is there anything that you learn in the first fight? Um, and is there anything that you would do differently in the rematch? Yeah, I will, I will use more of my arsenal and I will even respect him less in the sense. Uh, I, I, wow. will, I will, yeah, man, like I, I remember going into the third round and I'm like, uh, okay, I need to get this round. I don't care. I'm just going to walk him down. Whatever he throws at me, I don't care. Like I'm going to put All on right. my A game. He did not do nothing, man. He did. He third round, even striking, even after we came out from, from the, uh, from those uh, grappling, um, 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 scrambles and stuff. He didn't have anything from me. He because he, he, he always tried to put pressure right out when he came went right when he comes out from uh, uh, some grappling. Because uh, I knew like that's why I didn't want to overcommit in a sense with the grappling because I know I knew like he, after. He was coming out from uh, with his previous opponents. Whenever he was coming out from like grappling scrambles and, and grappling exchanges, he was right going into pre pressuring that guy. And even when we came out from that from from the grappling, he did not have anything for me. And I remember like that moment where like I come out, I'm tired, but I'm like, yeah, man, come, fucker, like I'm I'm ready too. Like don't don't, don't you think you fucking so, brought bro. it, man. You brought it, bro. Yeah. yeah was... And 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 the funny thing is that. I'm just a different fighter, man. I look at that fight and I'm like, he knew so much more about striking than what I knew, and he could still not do almost anything. Like right. he literally just inside low kicked me and like a few jabs, and that's about it. Well, but I'll tell you what, I I, I for one am 100% fucking looking forward to that rematch. <laughs> like yeah, that's absolutely. yeah. Uh, so Marvin, I mean, I, I think a lot. Of, a lot I think man like even like these, these last few fights it's just uh people are not aware of the mental warfare before the physical warfare and uh and that's where they lose a lot of times and then when they go in there they're just not themselves or they don't perform at their best or they they, they convince themselves or something that is not going to be something that is not going to happen and uh and then they lose. I feel like if, even Whitaker wasn't 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 right when he when he walked into that fight. Not even yeah. talking about his last fight. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this in real quick to, to one of the questions I asked you earlier. You know, you make a good point about these mental warfares, and there. You know, people always say like with Mike Tyson. You know, it's like he won the fight before he ever stepped in the ring, just with the mental game he would play. Um, how do you deal with that stuff? I mean, like I, I asked you about fighting for Italy, and, and does that add the pressure to you? And you said, you know, you, you've learned how to channel and focus your energy. Um, but how, how, do, how do you channel and focus your energy when, when it's the other fighter? How do you not let them get under your skin? Well, first of all, you don't have to let them find that thing that's going to get you pissed off, you know, because, uh, like, you know, this happens in my life sometimes, but when it comes to fighting, I'm really, my approach is really methodical to this. And it's like, you can't let them... You can't you can't give them anything to to you can't let them know that anything piss you off so, because that that is when they're gonna keep bothering you on that thing, yeah you know? but in, in in general I feel like um, you just gotta be solid and just stay stay centered at all time and and whatever you want to do you do it because you want to do it not because you react to something and um, and just be aware of it man and then. I don't know, man. Some people, you know, I don't know. Some people are just weak mentally. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Some people just. just yeah. <laughs> You're right well, about that. <laughs> and, and, and but you see it all the time, even at the highest level. Like, 
it's like I don't know. You see it all the time. Like a lot of people even crumble with McGregor all the time. Mm-hmm. And then you see these other strong, mentally strong people that comes in and they match him mentally, and then they do, they do very good even in the fight yeah. itself. Right. Somebody like Khabib or somebody like Nate Diaz or Mayweather. You know these guys, they're they're elite, and you don't you don't fuck with them. Neither right. mentally, neither physically, and then they go out and put on good performances. Yeah, and it's you it's funny. Like Cerrone, he just he crumbles like 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 a piece of cake. Yeah, because because he's not if if he can bring the if he can bring the fight mentally where he wants to even before then he goes out and put on a great performance. And if he can't, right. it's a whole different story. I can't. It, it must be so hard not to fight emotionally, you know, and to just to leave all that stuff outside of the octagon. And when you come in there, it's like, this is my game plan. This is what I have to do, regardless of what was said. You know, I'm pretty sure that when you're when you're laying the leather on somebody and they talk <laughs> shit to you, I bet it feels pretty good to land a few fucking smacks, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I like I, I like when there's like that extra like uh, motivation to to punch to punch a person. <laughs> yeah. <in the> face. <laughs> All right. So, like Marvin, it. you this is this is crazy. I mean, you are only 27 years old. Uh, you are trailblazing your way for a title shot in the middleweight division. Uh, you know, they're saying Israel is going to move up to light heavyweight. So if you can't get a title shot at middleweight for your next fight, I know you called out Paulo Costa, uh, which I think would be a banger. Um, yeah. But is there anybody else in that division you can see or you would want to fight? I, I, I think the next fight for me will be Darren Till. I think that fight is going to happen. Nope, shit. Oh, there, there, awesome. there, there, there's some work. Uh, yeah, there, uh, and, there, and I, I'm not sure. There's nothing sure, mm-hmm. but that's what I think where it's going to. I think uh, me and Darren Till are going to fight. Wow. So Italy versus UK. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. The gorilla versus the stallion. I love it. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, and I know normally, normally Italy doesn't come out good against UK, but this time. For sure. This time, yeah. I, I'll start a trend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, uh, Marvin, those are all the interview questions we have for you. But now we always surprise our fighters with a little game we play at the end of our interview. Oh, uh, yep. So, you've gone three rounds with people. You've gone five rounds. Have you gone five rounds? Have you, you done mean, a five? Have you my done last a five? fight was five rounds. Yeah, five rounds. Right. Uh, so, now you're going to go ten rounds with Jonathan and Rob. Yes. These are real quick, fun answers. Are you ready to play Marvin Vittori? Of course. Of All course. right, here we go. What is the favorite dish your mother makes? What kind, what's your favorite meal that she cooks? So she makes uh, uh, polenta. It's pezzatino. It's like, uh, it's like a polenta and stew, the way we oh, do it back love home. Love it. Yeah. Uh, love it. Uh, amazing. Uh, okay. If you found $2,000 on the ground, what would you do with it? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Put it in your wallet. <laughs> yeah. Moral moral question. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Two thousand dollars. You cannot do that much. Right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Especially in California. I don't know. I'll probably buy buy the ticket for for, for when I'm gonna go back to Italy again. Uh, there you it's, go. It's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, how old were you when you had your first kiss? For no, probably twelve. Kiss probably twelve. But I could be. You wrong. see, the Italians, man, you guys are lovers Fun. from a young age, from Fun. a very yeah. young age. I remember, like, for me, that was the thing. It was always like, for me, it was never like, oh, I gotta be like, you know, it has to be something special. I, for me, it was always like, I just need to find a girl. Who like, will let you kiss her? This magnificent first time. I like, <laughs> just needs Amazing. To <laughs> it's like your first fight. It's like you just want to get it over with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I want to fight. Yeah, that's exactly the first. When I walked uh, in the gym, I remember uh, probably it was the second <laughs> training. I'm like, when am I going to fight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what is your favorite pizza topping? 
probably probably it's uh it's easy actually the prosciutto prosciutto cotton uh, yeah with some arugula yeah, yes. yeah. Awesome. prosciutto i love it yeah um all right if you could fight any celebrity who would you fight I'll smash Jake Paul's ass. Right yeah! Now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fuck yes! <laughs> he need he needs it. He needs he needs to be slapped around a little bit. Uh, do you eat food that's past its expiration date if it smells and looks fine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Expiration. Like a man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you gotta smell it. Like it's telling right, you. right. But nowadays, though, all those conservatives. But if if it's good food and you can, and it doesn't smell bad, and yeah, all right, like this eggs, is... like something like eggs, man. They put whenever they put the ex expiration date, and you cannot listen to that. Yeah. Right, all right, trying, to, yep, playing games. All right, Marvin. Uh, this next question is uh, it's a very very difficult one. Um, would you rather be a deaf musician or a blind painter? No, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, no, deaf musician, though. Deaf. Musician, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, all right. Did you ever buy something that you instantly regretted, uh, instantly regretted buying once you got home? Oh, yeah. A lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, yeah, dude, yeah. I do that shit. I'll put a shirt on and I'll be like, look in the mirror, like, why the fuck did I buy this? Yeah. <laughs> like, the guy in the store playing me bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. This is my last question, and Rob has one more. Um, what is the craziest thing you've ever done on a dare? Uh, oh, when dare means when they dare you to do something. Yeah, they dare you to do something. Probably, like, we, we always do these bullshit <laughs> things with my buddy when we're back home, and he's like, oh, why don't you climb up on that mountain? And he's a squirrel, man. Like, he just, like, <laughs> climbs up, like, <laughs> everywhere. And he can't, he's, like, daring me. I'm like, oh, you're such a pussy. You cannot climb right. up this <laughs> And I'm, like, my body type is not great at that. <laughs> And, and I'm always like, like and I remember like one point I climbed out this rock and then and halfway I get stuck. And like with the shit, man, like I'm about to go off. Amazing. Probably uh, one of those things, uh, Amazing. He got stuck. <laughs> I just, it'd be fucking hilarious he had to send a helicopter in. <laughs> uh, all right, so last one for me. What game have you spent uh, the most hours playing? Oh, when I was about like 14, 15, I used to play, I, I used to lose my life on that game. It used to be a Line Age 2. Oh, like yeah, role, dude. Role, role, role game, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bad man, I used like 14, like probably like 13 to 16. I used to play like 10 hours a day or something. <laughs> Holy shit, do you still? Are you still... No, I don't want to mess with anything. Like, I, I know a lot of fighters, like, they play like a lot of like uh, Call of Duty, and, like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But Call of Duty might be all right because you know it goes by 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 game, so then you, it's not. You don't need to nerd as, as bad, you, you can nerd as bad, but like that, those role games are. Worse, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Marvin, that is all we have for you, buddy. Uh, dude, I can't wait to see what you do this year, bro. You are you are on a fucking warpath, and we are both huge fans of yours, man. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for coming on. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll have to next time you're in LA. We'll have to go out for a nice big Italian dinner. It's on yeah, me. We're yeah. we're doing it. I'm, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, guys, thanks for tuning into the Casual Podcast. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Rob. And that is yeah. Marvin fucking Vittori. Uh, uh, thank yeah. you, guys. We'll see you soon, thank Marvin. You. Thank you again. All right. Bye.